Hey everybody, welcome to another Darkest Dungeon mod overview. My name is Element5, and tonight we're taking a look at the Snake Charmer. The Snake Charmer is the first mod by creators Baybot and Menlo. Menlo who did development and artwork, and Baybot who did a lot of the coding and development. Uh, and they've really done something nice here. This is a fun class that uh, is a little bit different feeling, but isn't too complicated. Has some really beautiful animations and effects, sound effects, uh, and is a lot of fun to play. And the focus and the idea was to create something that felt true to the aesthetic and feel of Darkest Dungeon, but retained a sense of originality that wasn't based in complex skills. And I think that uh, Menlo and, B and Baybot have done a good job at really making that come to fruition. It is a class that brings something unique and, and something uh, a little bit different, but doesn't feel overdone. It doesn't feel overwhelming or underwhelming in a lot of cases. For the most part, what's unique about it is the fact that it revolves around snakes, and that obviously that makes you think then about Venom and about Blight damage, but also uh, the kicker with this class is, is its high crit chance and large damage value range. So you get to land a lot of crits, which is interesting, um, because obviously we have, you know, Critsmas as a part of Color of Madness patch. The other fun thing about this class is that it really feels like a hybrid uh, damage dealer and support class, and that's how I like to play it. You can definitely play it up front as a more aggressive, kind of Blight-oriented class, or you can play it in back and be just a straight-up crowd control and support and stress healing class, and definitely somewhere in between I think is the most fun that I've had with it. Now, according to the description on Steam, the Snake Charmer is a versatile hero inspired by other classes, such as the Houndmaster and Jester, and has rather simple skills but quite effective depending on the role you need. With a well-oriented build and proper trinkets, he is able to ensure any position. On the support side, he can heal stress, give actions to other heroes and stun opponents, and as a DPS, you'll take advantage of his very high critical chances and strong blight, but you will have to deal with his random base damage output. Mix those abilities and find your way to master the Snicks. And we're fortunate enough with this class to see a backstory comic strip attached to it, which is really awesome. A nice little piece here by Minlo, and we can see, and there's actually a lot of information to be gained from this first frame here uh, on this comic strip. You can see the young Snake Charmer uh, being taught by the Master uh, inside this, this tent here with some snakes hanging out, a snake just kind of chillaxin on the left here. Uh, but then this very interesting what looks like a red hook on the right, a little red hook uh, bust or statue, which makes you think that maybe the master of the Snake Charmer actually has some tie to the Darkest Dungeon ancestor. And then in the next frame here, we can see the master teaching the ways of uh, what I'm assuming is the Snake Venom. And then the Snake Charmer just hanging out here <laughs> with a couple snakes uh, reading by candlelight, I'm assuming uh, studying up on the ways of being a Snake Charmer. Then we have this really interesting uh, rite of passage here, the, the master carving, if you will, the scales into the head of the snake charmer. And then we get this really beautiful uh, zoom out in this middle frame here, I love this. A, what looks like uh, the floor moving with all these snakes hanging out, a bunch of lit candles on the side, and a broader shot of uh, this rite of passage. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. We get to see the master here in the left frame, uh, gesturing over to the table, which appears to have some packed clothes, a snake basket, and the letter. And then we get, you know, the, the snake charmer's uh, full affliction reaction here as they reach out and then grab the letter with the affliction symbol, uh, being invited to the Darkest Dungeon Hamlet. So really, really cool. Really, really excellent little comic strip. Always appreciate when uh, modders go the extra mile and have a, a little bit of backstory a comic strip attached to their characters. And Baybot told me that, in fact, the Snake Charmer lore is centered around the Master. The man was quite interested in occult arts and was at some point in contact with the Ancestor, who missioned him to find out some clues about the secrets lying under his dungeon. But during his discoveries, the Master understood what kind of things the Ancestor was going to unleash and tried to dissuade him. It was too late, and all he could do was to finish his apprentice's training and send him to the hamlet before he dies in the hope that he could stop all of the madness. So the Snake Charmer then carries a heavy legacy. He knows a bit about the darkest entity, which he calls the Devourer, but it also appears that his knowledge is quite far from reality, being from a distant land and himself growing up all alone. 
Bebot mentions to me as well that they are actually thinking about implementing some journal pages to give a little bit further backstory into this character, uh, as well as some party names on the way, etc. Fun fact about this class too, uh, because it is a snake charmer, it does not actually group up with the shield breaker because of her fear of snakes and her and her lore around snakes and flashbacks. Though Baybot let me know that they are try they would love to allow for the shield breaker and the snake charmer to join to be able to group together if for example she has finished her nightmares. Uh, so that's an interesting idea and I don't know if they're going to be able to pull that off, but kind of fun the idea that they can't go together lore wise and it kind of makes sense. So before we jump into the Snake Charmer's abilities and really break each one down, let's take a look at the stats here. An Apprentice Level 1 Snake Charmer starts with 22 max HP, which is sort of average, 7 dodge, which is kind of interesting, 0 prot, 3 speed, no accuracy, and a, high, a very high 9% crit, and a large damage range of 2 to 8. So this is interesting. This is definitely helps to define a little bit of how this class feels to play. I mean, you have sort of a... You know, an average sort of moderate HP. You you actually start with some dodge, which is interesting. The speed is a little bit slow here, and you will kind of feel that. However, the crit is high, uh, and when this character crits, it gets the uh, the crit buff that actually buffs the speed of this class. So that that helps a little bit too. This is also a large damage range. So two to eight uh, means you know trying to do here is capitalize on the crit damage that this class puts out. Uh, the crits then will stack a higher blight duration on the things that you hit with blight attacks, uh, and then that will also boost the speed of this class, which helps out quite a bit. So in terms of the resistances, uh, really nothing that interesting, uh, nothing very high except for blight resistance, and that would make sense thematically, given that you're playing with a class that works with snakes and has maybe built up a tolerance or knows how to kind of work around uh, toxins and venoms and that kind of thing. So that's kind of interesting. And if we just take a broader look at the, the kit of this class, uh, one thing that I kind of like to think about if you just want to jump in is, you can basically do, for the most part, an aggressive kit this way, or you could kind of do a support kit this way. And you'll notice that as I select these different abilities here, you're going to see that this starts to become position one or two, really centric around two. And then if I drop these and add them into back here, now it becomes three or four. So really just if you want to jump into this class and you're not really interested in a full breakdown of abilities, this is kind of more of a support and it's basically rank three or four. And then of course if you take these, it's definitely more rank one or two. Uh, so that is kind of way, the way I think about it, but let's just jump in and take a look at the first ability here, which is Venomous Fangs. Venomous Fangs is a melee attack, which you can use in position 1, 2, or 3, and it targets the unenemy in position 1 or 2. It moves you forward 1, has an accuracy base of 85, a plus 3% crit modifier, 100% chance to blight 4 over 2 at level 1. So this is sort of a bread and butter attack here that lands a blight, moves you forward, has a decent chance to crit, uh, and do a bit of damage. A victory. Perhaps the turning point. Next in the Charmer's Kit then is Mamba Dance. Mamba Dance can be used in position 1 or 2, it can target any enemy in any position, it is a ranged attack that sends you back 1, with an accuracy base 100, damage modifier minus 20%, plus 11% crit modifier, which is significant, but it also bypasses stealth, de-stealths a target, and then debuffs the target for minus 20% blight resist, 100% uh, chance at level 1 with buff self plus 5 accuracy. So, if you're moving forward with Venomous Fangs and you get into position 1, a nice way, you can obviously continue to do Venomous Fangs from position 1, but a nice way to follow up then would be to Mamba Dance from position 1 back to position 2. Uh, but I think the, the broader utility of Mamba Dance is really to de-stealth things, it has a high crit percentage uh, to debuff things so that they have uh, less blight resist, and to buff yourself for plus 5 accuracy. Brilliant confluence of skill and purpose. Next in the Charmer's Kit is Feast. Feast is usable in rank 1 or 2. It targets all enemies. It is a melee attack with an accuracy base 80, 
minus 60% damage modifier, minus 4% crit modifier, and a clear all corpses. So Feast is really kind of cool conceptually. It's just a, you know, you're summoning this very giant snake or maybe a pack of snakes, uh, and you're just clearing out the corpses. You're doing a little bit of damage, but you're just getting corpses out of the way, and you can do this in the front line. A powerful blow. Next in the Charmer's Kit is Constriction. Uh, Constriction is the is a ranged stun attack which can be used in rank 2, 3, or 4, and it targets enemies in position 1, 2, or 3. Uh, it has an accuracy base 90, damage modifier minus 70%, and a minus 7% crit modifier, a 90% stun chance at level 1. Also debuffs a target minus 5% damage and minus 4 speed. Conceptually, I really love Constriction. I, I love the idea that you're, you know, sending a boa constrictor out to something to just tie it up, essentially, a giant snack hug, um, which is pretty great. You're going to get a stun off, a decent stun chance at this level, and then the debuff is considerable. Minus four speed on an enemy means that it's likely going last or at least much slower than your team in the next round. So that's worth considering. You're not just stunning something, you're also... Uh, making it a lot slower so you have a turn before it next round. Next in is Rattling Trap. Rattling Trap can be used in any position, and it is the Snake Charmer's Repost ability. Self Repost minus 50% damage, Activate Repost. Repost Blight 100% uh, base chance at level 1, 2 over 2. So this is pretty cool. I love the idea, again, conceptually, that you're laying out, you're setting a trap of snakes, right? So you go up against a boss that has multiple turns, or is an AoE group like Brigands, you open up a snake trap, you lay it in front of you, all of these AoE, AoE attacks come your way, or multiple turns come your way, and every single time, you, they get bit. It's just a really, really cool idea. So next then is Vicious Charm. Vicious Charm can only be used in position 3 or 4, and you can only use it 3 times per battle. It buffs a friendly target uh, to add one action, okay? Give it an extra turn this round. It also debuffs that target, minus 40% damage, minus 40% healing skills, minus 40% stress healing skills, and a flat minus 20% to all skill effects chance. So, if you're not catching this, the idea behind Vicious Charm is you are literally giving another member of your of your team an extra action per that round. However, because that's very powerful in a lot of cases, you're also debuffing their efficacy almost by half. So last but not least in the Charmer's Kit is Calming Toxin. Calming Toxin can only be used in rank 3 or 4. It is a stress heal of minus 8 to minus 10, can be used on self or another companion in the group, and it has two separate die rolls of Blight 50%, base 1 over 2 at level 1, and 60% base chance of 1 over 2. So a powerful stress heal with this character. Uh, but, you know, the drawback of having two separate die rolls attempts to actually blight the class. Important to note that most characters typically have a decently high uh, base blight resist. So, ultimately, I think in a lot of cases, the if there was just one percentage chance here that you would land a blight, it would be very negligible. I think there's a separate die roll here and two different die rolls 
to land the blight just to make it slightly more likely that you might actually hit a blight on a character but for the most part i i don't experience it very often So now that we have a broad understanding of what each of these abilities does, let's just talk about builds and playing this character uh, with groups, okay? Obviously, this is a Blight-oriented class, and so going with Blight groups, going into dungeons that are more vulnerable to Blight, uh, like the Ruins and Cove, makes sense in a lot of respects. And you can definitely do, you know, a more aggressive uh, build, and this is something that I like to do a lot, which will basically put you moving into position one, moving out of position one, moving back and forth, and doing decent damage, de-stealthing things, uh, able to hit all ranks with Mamba Dance, which is really interesting, doing really decent uh, critical strike chance as well as blight damage with Venomous Fang, so that is worthwhile. But then Constriction, you've also got your stun as long as you're in, pos as long as you're in position two or back, and Constriction does a decent amount of damage as well, debuffing the speed of things, plus Rattling Trap can be used in any position and now you can retain your repost. If instead you want to go for more of a full support, then you just go for something like this. You've got your your backline ability to stun uh, anything except for rank 4, and then you've got Rattling Trap and Keeper Repost, the ability to give things extra actions, and your Stress Heal, which keep in mind can only be used, both of these only usable in, in rank 3 or 4. So really, these two keep you in the back, using these two keep you in the front for the most part, and then these are a lot more flexible. It's also worth just taking a second to really talk about Vicious Charm. This is not the first time that I've encountered a mechanic which awards uh, a companion in your party an extra action that round. Typically, my experience with this uh, revolves around playing Pitch Black Dungeon in which you could craft or find a potion which would, an award, which would award one of your members an extra action, and that would be very powerful. Think about the, the power and capability of using somebody in your, in your party to mark something, and then having a bounty hunter with two actions that just hits the marked target twice in a row. That is insane tempo, that is insane damage and output in, in a single round. Therefore, this comes with uh, the very necessary debuffs that are attached to it. Minus 40% damage healing, stress healing, and 20% efficacy skills chance, right? So, so I'm not sure how I completely feel about this ability. Every time I see a, a mod, a modder develop a class that will give somebody else an extra action, I think some of the time this is not very useful, other times it might be really powerful. What I appreciate about this where it sits right now is that Minlo and Baybot thought very deeply about the fact that, okay, we're going to give something another action, so we're going to take away an action from the Snake Charmer, give it to somebody else like a Leper, but if we do that, then even though the Leper can do one hue and then another hue, it's going to be essentially 50% less effective on both of those hues. Maybe you're you're doing what I did here with the Man at Arms in the clip, whereby, you know, essentially you're, lin you're, you're hitting something for small damage that might be, you know, close to a death blow or just in general, and then you're following that up with the utility of a stun. Now in terms of the Snake Charmer's camping kit, we get four unique abilities that bring uh, a little bit of interesting and kind of unique utility, and that starts with Mithritidism. Mithritidism is a time cost one, so really affordable, the entire party gets 10% Blight Resist as long as you have an Anti-Venom in your inventory for the entire quest. That's a pretty interesting and, and fairly different uh, camping seal that we just don't typically see, and I really, really like this idea. According to Wikipedia, Mithritidism is the practice of protecting oneself against a poison by gradually self-administering non-lethal amounts. The word is derived from Mithridates, who so feared being poisoned that he regularly ingested small doses, aiming to develop immunity. So very cool idea there, really affordable, and uh, also helps to just aid in, if you're going to be doing like a lot of calming toxin, for example, uh, then just aid that little, just add a little bit more blight resist to the group uh, and make things a little bit easier. So what follows is exotic spices. Time cost two, also really affordable, one companion, so one other member of the party gets a 75% chance for 10% crit for two battles, 75% chance for five speed for two battles, as well as a 50% chance of 20% stress damage received for two battles. This is a really interesting ability. Uh, probably worth it in a lot of cases. The 75% chance to get 10% crit and five speed 
uh, with a coin flip of getting 20% stress damage received. 10 crit and 5 speed is nothing to laugh at. Speed is really powerful if you're new to Darkest Dungeon. It, you know, you take a die roll 8 plus your speed value and that determines which characters are going to go first at the beginning of a round. So buffing that means you're going first, which means you get to act before the enemy does, which means you get to land your stuns or kill something before it has a turn, etc. So in general, speed is a really good stat to have. The 10% crit, that's a very high uh, crit buff. So, you know, I think exotic spices for time cost 2 is probably worth it, so long as you're just not doing maybe a torchless run, or a run where you're taking on a lot of stress, where where that 20% stress damage received is actually going to be a pretty heavy negative. Next then is Melody. Melody is a time cost 3. All companions get 5% crit for 4 battles, and heal 10 stress. Pretty great ability, I think, actually. For time cost 3, this is really affordable. Definitely doesn't hurt to give every all the other companions in the group 5% crit and just an, an overall stress heal. I mean, essentially, you know, you're getting a 15 stress heal from Encourage, so you're landing uh, slightly nerfed Encourages to all of your other companions and giving them 5% crit. This, I think, is, without a doubt, the best camping ability that this class has. So last then is Reserve. It is a time cost one. Self only produces a random supply item. So it could be any random provision that you could buy in the provision screen before a dungeon. You get to use this twice uh, per camp. And it should be pretty... The fact that you don't know what provision you're getting, that it's a random provision, um, you know, makes sense that this is that affordable. I mean, this literally uh, borrows from the Antiquarian's resupply ability, which is the same cost. Self only produces a random supply item, but you can use this three times. So it's just integrating a little bit of the uh, the feel of an antiquarian into the group, which I think makes sense. Now, in terms of trinketing the snake charmer, you have a lot of options, and that is because this class is just inherently very flexible. You can play it in the back line, in the front line. You can do more damage attacks, as I said, uh, or maybe be more of a support class with stuns, stress heals. So it depends on how you want to play it, and I've definitely played it where I bring along something like the Ancestor Scroll and add to the stress healing done and just see just how effective I can make Calming Toxin really work for me. You could go for dodge and help out the Rattling Trap. You could definitely go for accuracy, make the attacks hit a little bit better. If you have something like a uh, something similar to a Vial, or maybe like the Ladle with Blight Chance on there, I mean, of course, you could do that to improve the ability to land Blights with Venomous Fangs or with the Reposts. However, just keep in mind that if you up the Blight Chance of this class, you're also going to be upping the likelihood that you land Blights should you be using Calming, calming Toxin. Personally, I find it a lot more interesting to take a look at the uh, unique trinkets that come with the Snake Charmer. Uh, you have some some really interesting stuff here thrown in, like the Ancient Knowledge, uncommon 20% damage versus Blighted, but also 3 speed with minus stun resist. That is a pretty decent trade-off there. Uh, you also have stuff like this, the Scales Tattoo. This is a really neat idea. The Snake Charmer only... Very rare scales tattoo, minimum damage only, plus 150% damage melee skills, also 15% prot if in position one, and minus five dodge. So the scales tattoo allows you to be sort of a tough frontline tank, but do uh, minimum damage only, which is kind of cool. So therefore, my recommendation is to play this class, you know, feel out the way that you like it to play as a role, uh, trinket it according to so, and then definitely keep an eye out for the unique class trinkets that come with this because there's some really fun ideas here. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of Baybot and Minlo's Snake Charmer class. I really enjoy this class. It is a lot of fun. It feels like as even though this is their first modded class, they're really onto something. I congratulate them on the success that it is already. I think we're going to continue to see iterations down the line here as we already have. Uh, but for the most part, I think these guys have proven that they know what they're doing and they're going to continue to make this a polished experience and something that feels really balanced and fun. As always, I'll have the link to download this class from Steam in the information below the video. If you have any questions about how to play the Snake Charmer, please feel free to ask me in the comments section below. Thank you guys so much for all the subscribes and the likes and comments. As always, really appreciate the support. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.